Good evening, First Assembly of God. This is Pastor coming to you for a few moments on this Sunday evening. We'll uh, take a couple of minutes to folks to get logged on here. Let me know you're getting logged in there when you checked in. Hopefully, we'll uh, have some checking in here in a minute. And uh, all right, <clears throat> I see someone has jumped online with us there. Two people are, are coming in there. Amen. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Hallelujah. <clears throat> we'll give it a another minute or two. I see that there's a a couple that is watching. Let's see. Well. Amen. Had a little bit of technical difficulty just a few minutes ago, and uh, that's why it got me starting a little late. But at any rate, let me see. I wanted to see if it would show me who is. started here. Like I said, I'm not going to uh, keep you too awfully long this evening, but uh, we uh, we chose to uh, side on the, lean on the side of caution this evening with the, the weather that the way it has been uh, all evening. And uh, it hasn't been uh, too favorable. And um, I know here, uh, uh, here in a little bit, it's actually uh, uh, showing another round of of storms and things. Um, it's going to intensify here in a little bit. So, nonetheless, I hope all of you are doing well, um, um, and uh, hope all of you are being safe. But at any rate, um, let's go ahead and uh, uh, get started this evening. Uh, don't forget um, our services this coming Sunday. Um, nine o'clock Christian education, 10 o'clock is our morning worship. You come and be a part of that, uh, there at first assembly and uh, the Lord will bless you, um, for, uh, worshiping, being in the house of the Lord and worshiping, um, with him. Amen. Um, before we dive into, uh, just a, a little something the, the Lord put on my heart this afternoon to uh, share with you. We're not going to go into our series tonight, but just something, uh, small, uh, something here. Um, I just really felt led in my heart to uh, to share with you uh, this evening. Uh, but we want to continue, uh, before, as we go to the Lord in prayer, we want to continue to remember all of uh, our needs here upon the prayer list that we have with the church. Uh, continue to remember uh, Sister Sandra uh, as uh, she's uh, still needing a touch from the Lord in her body. And, uh, and um, uh, all of the unspoken prayer requests, the needs, uh, we want to um, remember all of them uh, this evening. Amen. So let's um, uh, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer, and uh, and then I'll share with you this evening what uh, the Lord has put on, upon my heart. Father, uh, we love you. We thank you for your mercy, your goodness, and your grace. Uh, Lord, I'm just thankful for the opportunity, uh, dear God, and the technology, uh, dear Lord, to be able to. Uh, um, stay connected and, and reach out and uh, be able to minister uh, still, Lord God, uh, even in the event of of um, um, 
severe weather and things of that nature that we're not able sometimes to uh, get to the brick and mortar, but I'm just thankful this evening, dear Lord, and I pray that uh, uh, you bless your people, continue to bless them and minister to them and heal them and strengthen them, Lord. Uh, all of our needs here to, uh, this evening up on the prayer list, uh, dear God, you see all of these names, you know all of these needs, and Father, we're just asking you to heal them and to bless them and to minister to them tonight, uh, dear Lord, and to strengthen them. Father, we're asking you to touch Sister Sandra. Dear God, continue to minister to her and strengthen her and, and touch her body. And Lord, just bring healing, we pray, to her body. All of the needs, dear God, of uh, of each and every life of First Assembly, uh, dear God, and all of their unspoken prayer requests and their needs there tonight, dear God, that uh, that they are praying for and that they are reaching uh, uh, to um, your throne room tonight, dear God. We just ask you to minister to those needs and touch them tonight and strengthen them, Father. And Lord, this evening, as I uh, bring this uh, um, uh, this word, dear Lord, that you have put upon my heart uh, this evening, uh, dear God, I just pray that you minister to it. And I pray, dear God, that you touch each and every heart and each and every life. And Father, I just love you now, and I praise you, and I ask it in Jesus' name. And we say amen and amen. Praise the Lord. So, um, here this evening, uh, as uh, um, as I wanted to share this with you here this evening, um, something the Lord put upon my heart. Uh, I got to thinking today, as you know, we was um, all the um, notifications and everything about um, the severe weather and and what have you, and and. Uh, and I got to thinking about this thought coming to my mind about storms, of how um, we were actually um, sitting in the presence of some natural storms here earlier, and uh, and still setting in uh, um, the reality of the storm isn't over with yet, and uh, we still have some more stormy weather uh, coming about. Um, and the word storms just keep kept you know rolling over in my heart and and in my spirit and and uh begin to think about it begin to meditate upon storms and um you know there's a reality uh that we're going to have storms in our lives um as i said we're sitting in the uh, the midst of a of, of natural storms going on you know right now um, some have passed, some are on the way, and um, but the reality is, is um, we're going to have storms. We'll have storms in our lives that uh, that are psychological storms, uh, emotional storms, uh, uh, health-wise storms, uh, spiritual storms, financial storms. Um, uh, storms are are um, are evident uh, in our lives. Um, and I was I was considering, you know, what constitutes a storm? Um, um, what constitutes uh, the things that we face in life uh, that are storms, or that that could be called or considered a storm, separate from maybe the self-inflicted problems or uh, the cause and effect situations in our lives? Uh, storms are. Uh, are um, unique storms uh, uh, isn't just everything you know um, we 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 have uh, problems in our life because of cause and effect uh, we have uh, problems in our life because uh, maybe we've um, um, it's self-inflicted um, um, those types of troubles that's that's not what I'm dealing with in regards to what a storm is um, uh, storms are a product uh, of the cause and effect of, and now this is in regards to natural uh, weather uh, uh, storms. Uh, storms are a product of the cause and effect of weather patterns and changes in those weather patterns. Uh, in short, uh, storms are a product of things that are normally out of our control. Uh, I want you to think about that just a minute. That's what constitutes uh, what I believe a storm. Um, 
uh, when I consider the, the stormy weather today, the reality is, is, um, uh, that's a, um, a situation that is far beyond my control. Um, there's nothing that I could do more or do less to, um, uh, uh, affect the storm. Um, uh, it was out of my hands, out of my control. It's, uh, it's not something that, uh, I have self-inflicted. It's not a cause and effect of, uh, of, of my actions or, or, or anything of that nature. So <clears throat> when I'm talking about storms this evening, I'm talking about <clears throat> those, uh, <clears throat> seasons, those situations, those, uh, um, times of, of, that we're facing in our life that are, um, um, things that are out of our control, uh, things that we've not, uh, manufactured or, or, or cause and effect, you know, um, if any of us, I would strongly, uh, uh, agree with this. And I'm pretty sure that, uh, nearly everybody would agree with me, agree with me on this. Uh, if any one of us, uh, had a say, uh, in it, we would probably want to cancel all storms and all possibility of storms in our lives. We, we would not want to uh, have to deal with storms. We wouldn't have to want to deal. We, we really don't want to have to deal with natural storms in our lives. Uh, we, we don't like storms that produce tornadoes and hurricanes and, and things of that nature. And so, uh, we would opt out of having storms in our life. So as I was meditating, uh, over, uh, uh this and, and thinking uh, about this, <clears throat> this evening, you know, uh, I want us to, uh, look at, um, um, storms and what we can learn from the reality uh, of of storms and from the principles that we are taught uh, in regards uh, to storms in the Bible. Uh, I have a few of them here to uh, share with you this evening. Um, the first thing I want us to understand uh, here this evening is, is this uh, uh, in regards to uh, um, storms, you know, a storm cannot prevent you from getting to your God assignment. Um, you know, sometimes storms are sent in our lives. Um, when we consider, just take for an instance, uh, natural storms um, this evening. Uh, the natural storms that has been going through this evening is uh, in, in, in some type of measure, they have been preventative. It has, uh, uh, prevented, um, the, the normal flow of traffic and has pre, uh, prevented, um, uh, people from being able to get to places of, of where they need to get to. Um, <clears throat> storms come with a, <clears throat> a sense of prevention, of, of to, uh, prevent us, um, from getting somewhere or doing something. Um, but the reality is, is when I look into scripture and, and I looked at several different scriptures, uh, today in regards to, uh, uh, this evening in regards to storms in, uh, Mark's gospel chapter number four, uh, starting at verse 35 and going all the way through chapter number five. Um, uh, in that, in that moment, um, it was uh, God telling his disciples, he says, uh, the Bible said that Jesus uh, told his disciples, he said, let us cross over to the other side. Um, and and so Jesus brought up the idea to cross over to the other side. And um, so they all got into the ship and they was going over to the other side. And um, uh, there was other little ships that followed, uh, boats that followed along with them. And... Um, it was in this moment that uh, um, Jesus, he was uh, asleep in the boat and um, the storm was a, a wailing and the wind was a blowing and the waves was a beating and the, sto and the, uh, and the boat was filling up. And um, uh, the disciples run to him and said, you know, um, uh, uh, does it concern you um, that, we are, that we're going to perish in this storm? And um, um, so Jesus got up and he rebuked the winds and the storms. And remember this story because we're going to come back to it again here in just a minute. But he rebuked the storm, and uh, but they went on to the other side. Uh, and they come to a place of the Gadarenes. Uh, and it was there uh, in the Gadarenes that um, uh, they come into the region of that, in that area there and uh, was encountered by a man who was uh, possessed with a, a demonic spirit. 
and um and so therefore he um uh Jesus uh cast out these spirits with inside of this man and this man was made whole see there was an assignment i believe uh in regards to the purpose of why Jesus and the disciples uh was to go to the other side uh there was another ministry um um uh, uh, experience that took place right after um, uh, in regards to uh, the casting out of the demonic spirits in this man. Um, but the reality is, is there was a God assignment, uh, a God-given assignment um, on the other side of the sea. And um, it was in the midst of that, that as it was going from one side of the sea to the other, a storm came, uh, a storm came that would have... Uh, uh, um, uh, drowned them uh, in the midst of the sea. It was a horrific storm. The the Bible called it. Uh, it was a a, a great windstorm, and um, the fact of it is, is what I gathered from that is is um, for each and every one of us, um, God has an assignment for us, and the fact is, is if we will um, trust the Lord. And we'll stay dedicated to him. And if we will um, follow him, the reality is, is the assignment that he has set before us, even though the storms of prevention that would might prevent us or try to prevent us from getting to that assignment, uh, it's not going to prevent you from your God-given assignment. A storm can't do that because when you are going uh, on your um, to meet the divine assignment of the Lord, no matter the storm, God will enable you to go on through to meet your God-given assignment. So that was the first thing that came to my heart uh, this evening was is that a storm cannot prevent you from getting to your God-given assignment. Uh, the second thing uh, in regards to storms, you know. Um, Storms get tumultuous and storms, uh, they stir up things and uh, things get moved about and, and everything of that nature. Um, things look different after a storm. Uh, but the reality is, is uh, one of the things uh, that come to my mind was, is that storms uncover things that we don't know that was actually present. Um, uh, in Mark's gospel, chapter number six, verses 45 through 52, uh, there's another recording where Jesus was um, uh, on the, uh, a matter of fact, Jesus uh, had just got finished feeding the 5,000 men plus women and children uh, with five loaves and two fish. And he um, he went up on a mountain to pray and sent his disciples on to the other side. And um, as they was in the midst of the sea, a storm came up. And um, this storm was uh, a, a great storm. Um, and they were just rowing and rowing and rowing. And uh, they couldn't make it through the storm uh, at all. And so, uh, therefore, uh, Jesus, he comes to them walking upon the sea in the midst of the storm. And, um, and remember this story. We're going to come back to it again here. Uh, we'll, we'll make reference to it again here in a minute, but he comes to them on the sea and um, uh, the Bible says there in verse 51 and 52, it says that um, when he come to them upon the sea, he made the sea to calm. He got into the boat with them and calmed the sea. And in verse 51, it said that they were amazed at how the storm ceased when Jesus got into the boat. They were amazed at that. Uh, uh, this, this incident is right after the fact. Now, I'm going to reiterate this. He just fed a multitude of thousands upon thousands. I mean, there was 5,000 men, not counting the women and children. He took two fish and five loaves of bread and fed them and had 12 baskets of leftovers. And in verse 51, it said they were amazed that he could calm the storm. The storm calmed when he got into the boat. And then in verse 52, it says, For they had not understood about the loaves because their heart was hardened. See, the reality is, is the storm 
even though they had the fragments, uh, those 12 baskets of leftovers on the boat with them. It was on the boat. They put it in the boat. There was going along. And in the midst of that storm, it took a storm to uncover uh, something that they didn't even know that was present. They were hardened in their heart to believing in the Lord Jesus Christ and his ability and 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 how uh, he could do great miracles. I mean, they just watched him feed the multitude and then they're amazed at how the storm ceases when he gets into the boat. And so, uh, and it was because they did not understand about the loaves because their heart was hardened. A storm uncovers things that we did not know was present. The third thing that I find out that um, come to my heart about storms was is that uh, storms do not constitute that God doesn't care for you. Coming back to that previous story in Matt, in Mark's Gospel, chapter number four. Um, remember, I told you the storm was uh, um, it was a great windstorm, is what the scripture says, a great windstorm, and the and the waves beat into the boat, and uh, in so much that the boat was filling up. And uh, now this boat was full of seasoned fishermen seasoned fishermen but in so much that the storm was so great that these seasoned fishermen was worried because they was going to go down nothing that they could do they could not they could not row hard enough they could not uh, uh, bail the water fast enough and um, uh, the Bible says that Jesus was down in the boat sleeping and um, and they went to Jesus and they woke him up and they asked him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Listen, you will never, ever perish. You will never perish if you are with Jesus Christ. Listen, it don't it don't matter the storm that comes. You you might you might be in the midst of a storm. And it feels like you're going to perish in the midst of this storm that you're facing in your. It could be a storm in in your mind. Uh, it can be a storm in your uh, in your emotions. It can be a storm in your feelings. It can be a a, a, a storm in your finances. Um, you know, it it could just whatever the storm may be. And the reality is, is this: is look, Jesus was with these disciples upon the boat. And I know the Bible says that, that God, he never sleeps and never slumbers. But I can tell you this. Asleep in Jesus, in this instance upon the boat, he was asleep. He's just as strong and just as powerful resting as he was to get up. The boat's not going down. The boat was not going to sink. The master of the sea was on the boat. God himself. They were traveling with him. And so therefore, uh, that was the third thing that come to my heart this evening was, is storms do not constitute that God doesn't care for you. Listen, Jesus got up and he rebuked the storm and the storm ceased. I want you to know that whatever storm you're in, I want you to know and I want you to understand that Jesus Christ cares for you. And you're not going to go down it. If you keep your hand in his hand, if you keep believing him and trusting him and following him, I promise you, the Bible confirms that you will not go down in the storm. God cares for you and he loves you. Amen. The fourth thing I wanted to uh, share with you in regards to uh, a storm. The fact is, is a storm as... As we discovered earlier, as preventative as it is, um, and as great storm, how great and large storms can be, I want you to know this. A storm cannot keep Jesus from seeing you, 
and coming to you. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 14, verses 22 through 27, um, sort of the same one in regards to um, Mark 6, I believe it is. But nevertheless, Jesus, he goes up on the mountain and he's praying and he puts his disciples in a boat and he sends them to the other side. And the reality is, is uh, in Matthew 14, and maybe I can pull it up here real quick. Um, Matthew 14, uh, 22 through 27 says, I want you to listen to uh, what it records there. It says, immediately Jesus made his disciples to get into a boat and go before him to the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on a mountain by himself to pray. And now when evening came, he was alone there. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Verse 25, And now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost, and they cried for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. I want you to understand and know that it was in, here's the thing. In order for Jesus to be able to walk to them, he had to know where they were at. Even though that they were, he was on a mountain. And, and I want you to just paint this picture in your mind. They were in the midst of a storm. The storm was bigger than the mountain. And the storm was great. And with the storm comes winds and heavy rains and, and uh, uh, clouds and obstruction of, of, of view. But I want you to understand that even though the storm was going on, Jesus could see them in the storm. He sees you. He is the God who sees you. Uh, your storm is not greater uh, than his ability to see you. God sees you. And God can come to you. The storm cannot keep Jesus from seeing you and coming to you. I feel somebody needs to hear that. Uh, that one really just, um, that one really stirred in my heart uh, when he uh, put that in my spirit this evening. God sees you in your storm. And he's coming to you with an answer. He's coming to you with the peace and the grace. The storm will not keep him from seeing you and coming to you. The fifth thing I want you to understand is, is this. Storms will come, but they will end. Every storm that is made mention of here in the scripture, yeah, they came, but they ceased. Every natural weather storm ceases. Get this, your storm is not permanent. Your storm is not permanent. Listen, there's a scripture. Um, the Bible tells us, I'm trying to remember exactly which one it is. Um, it's, it's talking about resisting Satan. The Bible says that if I'll draw nigh unto God, God will draw nigh unto me. And then he tells me to resist the devil and he will flee. You know, the enemy likes to attack. A lot of times the enemy is, is like a storm. He, he just attacks and attacks and attacks. And it's in the middle of that barrage of, of beating in the midst of that storm. Here's the fact. If I will stand firm in God and his promises, which are yes and amen in Christ, and resist the enemy by faith in Christ, resist the enemy continually, his storm will cease. Yes, it came but it'll cease. Storms come, storms have to go. Your storm is not permanent. And then the last thing I want you to understand here tonight is, is this. Storms will come, but they can be survived. Storms will come, but they can be survived. In Matthew 7, verses 24 through 27, in that text, it says it is a contrast between a wise builder and an unwise builder. He says, a wise builder is likened to a man who hears these sayings of mine 
and does them. He is like one who has dug a foundation and dug it deep and has built his life, his house, his home upon the foundation of his word, of God's word. And he says, the winds have come, the rains have come, and it will beat vehemently upon the house. Severe storm, but he says that house will stand. The house will stand. If we build our lives upon the word of God, be the one who builds their lives upon the word of God. If we will build our lives upon the word of God, the word of God does not negate the reality. Storms will come. They're coming. We're going to have to face the storms. But the reality is, is the word of God is the strong tower of the Lord. It is the securing foundation. It is the anchor that holds the word of God. And if you will build your lives upon the word of God, it does not matter the storm. You will survive the storm. So with that being said tonight, remember this. The storm can't prevent you from getting to your God assignment. Storms, they uncover things that we don't know was present. Storms do not constitute that God doesn't care for you because he cares for you. A storm cannot keep Jesus from seeing you or coming to you. Storms will come, but they will end. Your storm is not permanent. Storms will come, but you can, but you can survive the storm by building your life upon the word of God. Listen, I love you this evening, and I appreciate you, and I'm praying for you, and um, I pray this encourages you this evening. God bless you is my prayer. Let me pray with you before we sign off this evening. Father, I love you, and I thank you for your mercy and your grace this evening, and I just ask you, Lord, dear God, I ask you, dear Lord, that this word finds good ground this evening. I pray, dear Lord, that you would continue to bless uh, your people Thank you, dear God, for those who have signed on with us this evening and who is watching and and, uh, and and just enjoying the word, your word here tonight. Father, I pray you continue to bless, minister, heal, save, deliver, and set free. Be the great God that you are. And I love you for it, and I thank you for it, Father, in Jesus' name. And I say amen. God bless you is my prayer. Don't forget our services this coming weekend, Sunday. Uh, 9 o'clock Christian education, 10 o'clock is our worship time. You come, be a part of us. If you can't be there in person, join us on our live stream. Uh, and we love you and appreciate you. Be safe uh, out there. Uh, stay dry. And God bless. Have a good night.